DaVinci Resolve might have a couple of settings that are right under your nose that you don't even know about. So let's take a look at them. There's a lot of these. I'm just gonna go over a couple of them. Typically down here, you have your couple of settings here. And then uh, this button here will just bring up all of the projects that you've been working on. If you come over here to DaVinci Resolve, go into Preferences, there's some settings in here, as well as the user, there's some settings here. But there's more settings than just those. But there's nothing visually significant that shows that they exist. So let's just start off with the first one down here. As you can see, that there we have the word and then an icon. If you just right click down here, you can set it so that it's just the icon. It's going to add more space. And then up here as well, you have the same thing. Um, let's add in a piece of media here so I can show you the others. So we'll just add this in right here. So there's a lot of these that are actually in the Fusion tab and a lot of Fusion users will know about these. So typically when you're making all of your nodes, there might be a couple of nodes that have parameters that you know really bog down your machine if it's like some type of blur, like motion blur, or you just have high quality textures, something of that nature. What you can do is right in here, if you right click, you have all of your settings. And now for the non-Fusion users, if you were to turn off, let's say motion blur, what this is going to do is it's going to turn off motion blur for your viewer. If you have motion blur on one of your nodes, the final render will still keep that motion blur, but you just won't have it in the viewer so that you can work on the project and not have your machine bogged down. It's the same way with high quality and proxies. Uh, ping pong will just take in between these two parameters that you have set um, and then just go back and forth so you can play backwards. Uh, down here, if we right click on this, well, initially what this is, this is the amount of RAM that you currently are using and the percentage that you're using. So I'm using 3% and there's currently two gigs being used. So if I right click here, I can purge and then it'll purge the RAM that, you know, was caching something. The other things that a lot of Fusion users will know about are, let's say we take this text node and we'll just connect this up so that we can see it, whoops connect this up so then we can see if we write some text in here. And now we have our text here, but most people that are just new to Fusion, they won't know how to animate this. Like, yeah, you could move it around, animate it like that, you know, add some keyframes to the center position. Uh, but animating the text itself might be a little difficult unless you knew about the whole right click thing. Uh, you could come down here and do like the animate right on, that's you know one option, but the option that a lot of people won't know about is if you right click here, we have all these different ways to animate this particular text node. I'm not gonna go through them just for sake of time, but let's just click on this one. Once you click on it over here, you'll see that it's, it has some type of value. So it just uh, shows up as a modifier. You come into modifiers. What we can do with this now is if we look uh, in here, if I highlight some of this, now there's a box around these and there's a parameter that, where you can change just a particular portion of it and you could also go in and change the font and color as well. So you can do this, you can change the size, you can make them have them follow each other in size, trailing and there's, there's a plethora of different things that you can do in this but if you're new to Fusion you won't know that you know right clicking here you have a plethora of different options that you can add in. So that's just um, one of the other things. Coming over there's a bunch in here as well. One of the primary ones is if you bring up your nodes and let's say we make uh, a bunch of other nodes, if you know the key bindings or if you come up here to color nodes and then you can add in your different nodes, one thing that you can do additionally to this is you could right click on here and you can change all different types of things like you can change the type of color space that that particular node works in. And I have videos on it on different color spaces and how they work. Jumping over onto the Fairlight tab. Now, I'll be completely honest, I'm not that great in audio so that I don't spend a ton of time over here, but there are a couple of things that I do do. One of the big ones that I do, any track that you have, you can right click on it 
and you can change that particular track and how it's being used. Is it a mono track, is it a stereo track? Uh, one of my mics that goes into my camera, it's just, it's just a single mic. So I have to make sure that that track is mono or else you're only gonna hear it in one ear. So that's one thing. And you can also add tracks in if you wanted to add additional tracks. I think I went over most of the ones that I personally use. Uh, there might be a couple others that I can't think of. I do know in the Fusion tab, anything that you're that you're working on so let's go back over into here if you wanted to add let's say an expression in something you could just right click on here and then you know go into expressions and then you could have the expressions if you're coming from after effects you're used to a thing called the pig whip you can do the same thing here where you're just clicking on this plus dragging it to something else and getting that particular value so yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you for today. If you have any ideas or suggestions, leave them down below. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.